Hello everybody, this is the Epic Gaming Guru, and this time we're going to be trying something a little bit different, and we're going to end up checking out and reviewing straight through Death Frontier 2. So without further ado, let's check it out. Oh wait, this isn't the right spawn point, why is there people here? Uh, excuse me, hang on, I gotta go to Police Delo Department. So when I initially decided to try out and check out Death Frontier 2, I really didn't have my expectations really that quite high. So considering that this is actually a full free-to-play game, I was actually thinking that it was not going to be too well made, until I actually dived in further deep into it and realized that there's actually something really well made here. The game actually does have a pretty well integrated level up system as well as a bunch of skills and perks to be able to earn throughout your entire time trying to survive within Delbo. What I was actually surprised more about was that these are very well detailed and actually nicely made for what your character is designed for so you could literally build your character out of anything you please based on what perks you have. Selling items is actually not even a difficult task either. Most of the time you'll end up fighting rare or even elite or superior items you can end up selling which are unique types you could actually scrap for for a decent price in case you don't want to just sell them to any players in the market. This will happen oftenly and you'll end up happening to have a bunch of yellow or crazy looking items with weird different stats on them. Sometimes effective, sometimes not. But you'll end up being able to scrap them for a fairly decent price which is a nice little feature. During your time of survival, you'll end up finding a lot of other NPCs and a bunch of other actual characters who need you to do a bunch of stuff such as side quests. Usually these type of side quests involve killing off zombies in a location, getting blood samples of zombies in a location, and most of them involve finding a person, finding a pendant, finding an item, finding anything at all, even up to a freaking brooch that somebody has lost, and they're asking you to immediately go to the building that's infested with zombies in order to retrieve it and give it back to them for a certain amount of money and XP. Once you're actually done looking through and getting as many missions as possible so you can be able to actually gain enough XP to level up in the game, you'll actually notice that you have a lot of different ways you can go about doing this kind of stuff. And one thing I've actually noticed that they integrated into the game was actual event area missions while a different event will show up to either kill off a bunch of zombies or actually take on a boss in general, which is a very nice touch. Animations are also pretty decent while fighting zombies. Other than that, you will actually find other NPCs lying around in many different areas in the actual map that will also give you extra missions to do if you want to gain even more money and XP, which is also, again, not a bad thing, but it's also strange to just find them lying around these places, not near anywhere of the safe locations. Looking for items to survive with is a very common practice here within Death Frontier 2. You'll end up searching just about everything from bookcases, to saves, to little desks, to anywhere from a locker, from a little tiny cubby, like it, it just goes on and on and on of where you have to search. Even dead bodies that are rotting on the ground also count as fair game if they have a highlighted yellow lining over them. Every time you enter a new location, you'll end up seeing a few of these weird little red question marks that are on a door. That's actually a boss indicated room that you can go into and immediately fight a boss. I didn't know this for quite a bit of some time, but now that I do know it, it's actually a great way of either continuing to do my mission, or if I just take the time to beat the crap out of the boss. A majority of bosses will actually drop an item more or less, and sometimes it'll be a decent item, sometimes it'll just be an item you could sell for a quick little turnabout of profit. So overall with Death Frontier 2, it's not by far a bad game, but it is definitely different when it comes to the zombie genre. I would have to say that it's a pretty decent game, but that's pretty much all I can really say about it. It's just a fairly decent game. There's nothing really much else to put into it. It's pretty well made for what it's supposed to achieve, and I think by far some players would definitely enjoy it. I hope you all enjoyed this review though. This has been Epic Game Guru. Tell me what you all thought in the comment section if you want to, and I'll see you all next time. Like and comment, subscribe, and I hope you all have a good day.